Okay, so this is your desktop here. You have all your apps here. And actually there's two pages of apps here. This is the first page and the second page is over here. You have several other apps here. I'll just run through them real quick. You have a Chromium browser, which is the open source version of Chrome, the Chrome browser. Uh, you have Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Flickr, YouTube, Google Docs, Google Voice, Wikipedia, Canna Balt, Newsmap, Canvas Writer, Space Invaders, New York Times. And the second page is Factalex, TED, Simple Note, Academic Earth, Jackson Pollock, YouTube Education, Pac-Man 61, Office Live, and Google Art Projects. Now, all of these are web apps that you see here. Okay, so if I go to YouTube, it brings up the YouTube page, or should, brings up the YouTube page here, um, but it doesn't bring it up in a browser per se, it just brings up YouTube. So there's no search or anything up above here, it's just a window where YouTube is in. So it's almost as if it was an app in and of itself, but it's actually the web page. If I brought up Sprace Invaders here, it's just a game here, which is probably a flash game somewhere where it says freevideogamesonline.org that's probably where it comes from so I'll just quickly play a little of that I have uh, the arrow keys to move around and my space key to take out space invaders oh no okay so that's that now up here in the upper left hand corner you have a little a jolly cloud up there which looks like a little heart-shaped cloud and it says click here to hide all windows and show the home screen so I'm just gonna click on that and it doesn't do anything so I'm pretty much on my home screen now if I had let's say uh, Chrome up and then YouTube up and then uh, Google Docs up I could click on that and it would bring me back to the home screen now, if you look up here, I don't know if you can see it, I wish I could be screencasting it, but in the upper left-hand corner you have a little icon of everything that's open. So I have two Chrome browsers open. Get rid of that one. I have two YouTubes open because I double-clicked. I guess the apps respond to just a single click. And I have two Google Docs open. So that's a quick way to jump to whatever programs you have open. Now below that, you see a plus icon here. I'm going to click on that. That brings me to an app store here. So all you have to do is browse through here. You have featured apps, friends picks, my apps, native apps, add-ons, all apps, and then you have the categories of the apps down here. As you can see, I have several of them loaded on there already. Uh, but you can add new ones. There's a Boxy app here, Transmission app here, Dropbox, Skype. Let's add the Skype app and see how that works. I clicked it, it added it, and then up here it says Syncing. So I guess that will work in the background to add Skype onto there. And right now there's two pages, but these are the featured apps right now. Okay, there's several other apps, and it said, I think it said there's thousands of apps. Uh, when I was loading this up. So that is how you add new apps onto it and it'll just appear on your desktop. Now your desktop I believe is this next icon here which is the A right here. So if I go to the next page Skype should be there, right there. Okay. Now the next icon here next to the A icon here which is the desktop is looks like a social hub you have friends and you, your activities, you have stream, you have following, followers, top members, and public page. Now I don't know if this stream is a Jolly Cloud version of Twitter or if it is actually Twitter. I would imagine it's a, it's a proprietary version. And uh, so it seems like a Twitter type client here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a, uh, a Jolly Cloud version of Twitter. So that's the stream there. So you can uh, communicate with friends that way. Now over here, friends picks. So if you're friends with people, um, I guess there's recommendations on the side here. Now the next thing here is looks like a file, so it's probably the file system here. 
Now, what I said before is this is a cloud-based operating system similar to Chrome OS. The only difference is, is that Chrome OS is all cloud-based and no local storage. This one has both. Now, over here you'll see that I have 287.8 gigabytes of drive space. I have 271.2 gigabytes available. Uh, so there's 16.6 .6 gigabytes used, I assume, for this installation. So you have your file system here, your desktop, your documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. So it's nice that you can have this here, and I don't know if this will sync to the cloud or if you choose certain things that sync to the cloud. It has Dropbox over here, which I assume is how you sync things to the cloud. So on this device, you have certain files that you can use. And then if you want to put things up into the cloud where you can access it from another computer that's not hooked up to this hardware, you can use Dropbox for that. And I think they give you a limited amount of space. It might be two gigabytes of drive space over there, which is great if you're doing documents or some pictures. Uh, when you get into large media files, then you might need more space than that. But I think Dropbox, you can buy more space, but they give you, I think, two gigabytes free uh, when you sign up. But don't quote me on that. Check out their website if you're interested. Now, the next icon over here looks like a settings icon. And it gives my Facebook identity here, Tech Harvest, T-E-K-H-A-R-V-E-S-T. -E and like I said, that is the one that is hooked up to... Uh, my, that's the Facebook account I created, and that's the one that I use to log into the Jolly Cloud here. So it just gives you some information there. Badges, history, shared apps, and devices. And I have one device here. And then you can go over here, and it says this device, and it gives information on this device. Uh, any updates that need to be done and any app syncs that need to be done. All that is supposedly done automatically, so um, I don't think you really have to check into that too much unless you really, if something's just released and you want to make sure that it's updated, you might want to go there. Now, I actually like this a lot because it's a very simplified version of a computer. If you're going to be doing day to day tasks where you're not going to be doing a lot of intensive computing, this is perfect and it's a very lightweight operating system. So I really like it. I think it's a great option for a day-to-day -day computer that you're not going to be doing a lot of intensive computing on. Um, I think it might be a great alternative to some of the other options out there. Now up here in the upper right-hand corner you have your time, you have your volume, and you have your wireless strength here. Also you have a power button here. I'm going to click on that and then it says, are you sure you want to quit your session? So that's how you would power out or stop it. I'm going to cancel that, and we're going to go back to the desktop here. I'm going to X out of these things here, which are the open programs that I have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the browser, which is the Chromium browser here. There we go. Okay, that was me making it bigger. I could make it full screen by just pushing it up that way. And what it does is it takes up the entire screen, even the Jolly Cloud buttons that were up here. And that is uh, that's pretty cool because it gives you as much real estate, as much screen real estate as possible. Because Jolly Cloud is also great for netbooks. So obviously with a netbook, you have very limited screen real estate. So looks just like Chrome. If you're used to Chrome, I could probably sync my bookmarks here if I wanted to, uh, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to bring up a website, and we're going to see the uh, performance of, let's say, YouTube. Even though, there's a, even though there's a YouTube app on here, we're just going to see what the performance is of the browser here. Let me look up my channel. And click in here. Everything seems very responsive. Now let's play one of my videos here. This is an unboxing of my Intel Core i7 processor. And right now it's on mute. I could bring up the sound on this if I wanted to. Okay, what we have here is something that's very special to me. Oh, 
I'll just mute that again. And uh, excuse the speakers, these are pretty low end speakers in here, so. Um, but it seems pretty, let's see if we can get to more action here. It seems very responsive, no problems, no hiccups with YouTube here. Movement is smooth and fluid. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty nice. So it looks like it's a very lightweight operating system, like I've said before, and it's so you're not encumbered with the operating system taking up a lot of the system resources. You can just worry about the, the apps themselves doing it. Now, if I want to shrink down from a full screen, I'm going to try this X here. This might X out. This might close the entire window. Um, maybe I can just, yeah, I'll just go to the Jolly Cloud heart there, and then you can go back. So you would just toggle between this here. I don't know if I can actually bring it back down from a full screen mode. There we go. I just double clicked on it and brought it back down from a full screen mode. So I'm pretty impressed with this so far. It would be great, like I said, for an older system that you might have. Uh, or a netbook. It looks like a great netbook interface because you have your icons up here which are you know large and it's no small menus or anything. One thing I noticed is that you can move these things, you can move them around. You can change the order of them. I don't know what the situation is down here. It looks like you can't move things down to the bottom here so it looks like you only have two rows up here which you can manipulate. But it looks like you can X out of them and star them and, and put uh, comments on it, things like that for the apps. So I really like this so far. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And always, if you found uh, this informative and you like my videos in general, please subscribe. So that pretty much does it for this video. I will see you next time.